sin that we have done was placed on the cross by Jesus. And he bore our sin forever. God, as far as the east is from the west, I will remember your sin. Wow. What a great God. If you say the Lord is my refuge and you make the most high dwelling place, no harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near your tent. Well, how can bad things happen then? You understand what this is saying? Do you understand that if the Lord is my refuge, my hiding place, you think about Corey Temple. You guys know that name? Uh, she was in the uh, in Germany and, and they were hiding. It's called the hiding place, right? So she they hid the Jew, the Jews. And they risked their own lives from doing that. And the sister was getting all bitter about it. She just kept on trusting. The 
golden calf. Yeah. They were worshiping the golden calf. Who made that old golden calf? The people. Aaron, the brother, one of the leaders. It's like, he was like the vice president. <laughs> Moses wasn't like the president, right? He was the leader, and, and God led Aaron speak for Moses because Moses said, you know, I don't talk too good. You know, I, I'm not an eloquent speaker. And, and so God had him. And here's one of the leaders making an idol for them to worship. Doesn't make sense. So God went told Moses to come up again and he said chisel up to them. Stone tablets like the first one and I will write on them. Who wrote? Moses chiseled out the stone, but God wrote down the words that were on the first tablet which wrote. Be ready in the morning and then come up on Mount Sinai. Present yourself to me there on top of the mountain. No one is to come with you or be seen anywhere on the mountain, not even the flocks and herds may graze in front of the mountain. So Moses chiseled out the stone tablets like the first ones and went up to Mount Sinai in the morning, as the Lord had commanded him, and he carried the two stones in his hands. Then the Lord came down in a cloud and stood there with him. Yahweh, the Lord. And he passed in front of Moses, proclaiming, The Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious, slow to anger. Abounding in love. Woo! What's that mean? Abounding in love. His love has no limit. And faithfulness. Maintaining love to thousands and forgiving wickedness, rebellion, and sin. Yet, he does not leave the guilty unpunished. He punishes the children and their children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation. How many of you have experienced this? That parents see the kids, see like uh, drugs. The parents are drug addicts, and then the kids become drug addicts. Another kid, another generation, their kids become drug addicts. Why does that happen? Because of the stubbornness of each generation. You see, when God told them to teach their children about God's word, from the time they woke up to the time they went to the day, before they went to bed, constantly living the example, then that would be carried up to the next generation. But when they are evil all the time, guess what the kids are going to learn? Evil, yeah. In Galatians 6, it says, whoever sows to please their flesh from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the Spirit from the Spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time we'll reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have the opportunity, let us do good to some people. All. Huh? All. Oh, yeah. <coughs> and what does all mean? Everybody. All. All. All people, especially, especially. Oh, God. Now, I want you to understand this. Especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Why are there so many quarrels within the church today? Because we do not have love. And we do not have God's grace. We must, and, and that is an imperative, you must do good to all. Jesus said, love your neighbor as yourself. 
He also said, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. This is good. And if you don't do that, guess what you're doing? Bad. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. There's no in-between about it. In Galatians 5, it says, the fruit of the Spirit. Okay? So the fruit of the Spirit is basically describing God's character, who He is. Good. Okay? And what does goodness entail? Love. Joy. Peace. How many of you have experienced the peace of God that passes all understanding? It hearts our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Forbearance. there is no law. If you're living by the fruit of the Spirit, God's character, God desire is to have you have the fruit of the Spirit. God desires you to have His characteristics in your life. How many of you know somebody that's a good Christian and you say, now that, that person
clearly spoke to me. To the cross, I look. To the cross, I cling. Of his suffering, I do. Of his work, I do sing. On it, I sing. Both bruised and crushed, show that God is love. God is just.